Okay, we are live on air for a third time. Third time's a charm. Uh, welcome to the Coscast episode 21, the Cosplay Body Paint 101 special. That the uh, universe hates us to do. Yes, <laughs> obviously we're not meant to do this, but we are going to go straight in the face of the universe and say, fuck you, we're doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, first, I am your cos I am your host, Pixie Dust Cosplay, and with me I have my fabulous co-hosts. Annabella Cosplay. And Anyasia Cosplay. And right now we're gonna do, um, the first, the first segment of our show, which is Cosplay Progress. What have we done lately? And, uh, Annabella, what have you done? A lot. <laughs> I've done a lot. I've uh, recently worked on three cosplays at once, uh, all on the same day, and I have colored fabric for the first time. Yay! Ooh. Nice. Yes. Looks it's, very good. It, it's supposed to look like this because it's Samara's dress from the ring, and yeah. I, I've I've been like laying in water for a hundred <laughs> years or something. So <laughs> you're undead and gross. Yeah, th this kind of happened, you know, so. Mm. Yeah. What can Bye. you do? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Anyasia, how about you? Sadly, I haven't done any cosplay related. No progress, nothing. I've uh, been too busy with uh, my new work place and all that, so no, sorry. <laughs> it's understandable. It's a busy time of the year with school beginning and kindergartens starting up again and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I haven't done that much either, but I have bought a cardigan for my Luna Lovegood cosplay. Uh, and I'm going to modify it with some fabric paint that I bought. Uh, so, you know, to make it look like a, a Gryffindor house cardigan. So I'm just going to paint some stripes on the bottom and on the sleeves. So, And, yeah. yeah. You need to finish this. <laughs> this <laughs> week. Yes. Before Friday, preferably, because we leave on Friday for Torukan, and I want to wear Luna for Torukan. Um, and also, I had to buy myself some new face paint and body paint, because the last one I had sucked so much, because it was just this kind of uh, generic drugstore kind. Uh, so this time around, I have bought Creolon's Aqua Color, uh, which is amazing, which is what I'm wearing now. Uh, mm. For my death cosplay, which I will also be uh, be bringing to Toracon with me. Wow. So yeah, so we'll be talking a lot about this later in the show. Um, yes, we will. Yes, uh, but because we're moving uh, in just a couple of months, I won't have time to do a lot of big cosplay projects. So I think it'll be a lot of closet cosplays for me in the future. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's At least just in, nice. I think. Yeah. It's yeah, I mean, you don't have to do huge cosplays to have fun. That's that's my thing. And it doesn't have to be expensive. No. Nope. Yeah. Uh, and so, before we jump to our main uh, subject of the evening, let's talk about cosplay news. Yes. Yes. And this time around, we have quite a lot of news. We do. Uh, yeah. Uh, the first thing on our docket is that Silmarillicon, which is Arthodyne's, the, the Norwegian Tolkien... Um, Association's uh, first con had to change their names to Arthacon because they got into a little conundrum with the Tolkien heritage people. So they had to change the name, which is sad because Silmarillicon was such an awesome name. It was really great. Mm. I was really amazed that the name wasn't taken, but now I understand why. Yeah, it has to do with the Tolkien <laughs> heritage. Uh, Association or society or something like that. Um, so yeah, so it's Arthacon, but it will still be held in March and it will still be held at the same venue. So nothing has changed except from the name. So that's good to know. Yeah. Very good. yeah. Uh, and also, uh, Annabella, you had something from H and M. Yes, uh, H and M have started a new kind of campaign. Uh, the name kind of just flew out of my mind right Conscious. now. Conscious. Conscious, that's right. Uh, you can deliver your fabrics and old clothes, used socks and stuff like that, scraps of fabrics, um, into one of their containers that's in their in their stores, and you can get a 10% discount on 
this discount on your purchase. Which is very cool. Mm-hmm. It is very cool, especially for us cosplayers who always have a lot of scrap fabrics. <laughs> yes, I That's have a whole true. box full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're incurable that way. <laughs> Honestly. Um, yeah. So, and there was one more thing. There was uh, this whole uh, skin brightening cream from Japan that has been all the rage on the internet lately. And, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, It must be a hoax. I do not believe that you can have a cream that will actually brighten your skin. Yeah, like in one day. It it seems, at least it seems toxic. There must be like a bleach or something. Yeah, I'm thinking that too. There must be bleach bleach in there. (laughs) Yeah, no, so that just seems, that seems strange to me, and I'm not sure if I believe it that much. And and basically, if you're going to go pale, buy body paint. Or stay out of the sun. Yeah, or a really, really bright foundation. It's not that hard. (laughs) No. No. And I just, I just, I just don't think that's something that's gonna bleach your skin until it's like two shades lighter than what you really are in one day. It doesn't sound healthy if it even works. No, it sounds like Victorian-styled beauty tips. Yeah, it's like eat rat poison, become pale. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> poison in your eyes to make them bigger. Yes. Well, they, they did ate, that back in yes. the day. They ate rat poison to make themselves look pale. So, <laughs> and you suffer for beauty. That's what they say. But I'm not willing to suffer that much. No. No, me neither. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So that's the news segment over and done with, and there were some nice tidbits there. Uh, let's move on to our main subject, which is body paints 101. Whoa. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we have learned about body paints um, and things that you need you know, supplies and things that you shouldn't do and, think, you know, general things to think about if you're going to start using body paint. Um, and uh, Annabella and I had a little field trip today to Visage Makeup Store in Oslo where they have all the things you need to start with body paint or any other kinds of makeup. And, and they really, were really helpful uh, employees. Yes, very helpful employees. So we definitely recommend taking a trip in to that store if you're in Oslo and you need makeup. I think we ended up spending like a lot of money each. A lot of money. I think I spent almost a thousand bucks, like 800 and something. Yes, I've never spent too. that much money on makeup before in my life. So yeah. <laughs> That's basically uh, as good uh, a PR stunt as you can get. Yes. I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. So what did we learn? We, well, we can start with the basics. What do you need to use to start using body paint? Which the is fir- a good place to start. The first thing uh, is that you you need to buy the products that you're going to use. Uh, and the good start is like find a picture of what you're going to try to make yourself look like and figure out which colors you would need to do this. Yes. Yeah, I mean, let's take an example with, for example, my death, which is basically a completely white face, you'd think, but no, it's not. Um, because the trick with any any full cover body paint color is to make it, you know, to shade it. So let's say if I were doing a green, it would have to be a light green in the face, and then I would have to buy darker shades of green to do the cheekbones and the contouring around the nose and... Uh, shades under the eyes and things like that. And also, all, every time you do a colored co- uh, body paint, you also want to have some pink in your cheeks. No, no matter if you're blue or green or purple or whatever, because it just gives you that uh, that sense of ha- of being rosy, of being healthy, of you know having blood flowing under your skin. If that's what you're going for, at least. Yeah, uh, but that's <laughs> in general. If you look at, for example, I have a. Um, I have a uh, example here of Crick's Design, uh, who has done a lot of body paint, and she's very good at it. And if you look at her uh, different uh, styles here, you'll see that even on the green one here, even though her, she's totally green and has a very even skin tone, she's added li- a little bit of blush to make herself look, you know, more alive. And there's a lot of 
and color nuances in her face. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It looks real. It doesn't look like just you put just one color in your face. Yeah, I will, you have to do that. It's like uh, if you're just putting on your uh, foundation and nothing else, it will look totally flat and lifeless in the face and it wouldn't look good on pictures. Yes, so you're basically following, you know, uh, basic makeup instructions or, you know, methods. It's just that... Um, it's colored. It's colored. <laughs> That's pretty much the difference. Uh, so that's important to know that you don't only need one color, you need several shades of color and you need a blush color too. But you probably have that at home anyway. Yes. Yes. Um, to start, if you're going to do a body paint, I think the most important thing is that you have clear and clean skin. Yes. Uh, you need to wash off and probably if you're very hairy, you would need to kind of remove some of that hair. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I, for example, I have a lot of, of body hair in general, and I have, you know, a little bit of fuzz on my lip and around my cheeks, um, but I can't be bothered. It, it, I, it's easy enough to cover up. You just have to work a little bit extra to make sure that you cover all those parts that are a little fuzzy. Um, <laughs> it's not a problem. Fuzzy I mean, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. Fuzzy pixie. Uh, <laughs> and so, I mean, it even covers up my eyebrows because all of this is just painted on. So if, you, if, you, if you're capable of layering it enough without having it, you know, becoming clumpy, it'll work just fine. Uh, but yeah, as you said, it, if, if you feel like it, it might be easier to just shave everything off and have <laughs> this completely smooth surface. The easiest part, I guess, is shaving your legs because yeah. most people do that anyway. You do that um, anyway. <laughs> or you can wear, like, if you don't want to be bothered painting your whole body, you can wear, like, some kind of spandex thingy. That's yes, that's also color. an option. Uh, now, as in terms of supplies, what you need is... Um, well, you can choose between two different types of body paint. You have the grease or oily kinds of body paints and you have the water-based uh, body paints and the oily ones uh, are really easy to smudge so it's really not recommended to use it on big parts of your body because it doesn't dry so it'll it'll rub off on your clothes and things like that so it's uh, preferable to use it either just on your face or over uh, latex because yes. water-based paint will not cover latex uh, that's true Yes, so like for example, Crick's Design and Karin Olava Effects both do a, an Asari cosplay where they have these major latex headpieces on and you have to use grease-based body paints on them to cover them, basically. Yes. Yes, so that's good to know. Uh, whereas uh, water-based body paints, they dry um, and so they become less smudgy and then you can also set it with some fixing spray that you can find in several price classes that allow you to to set the makeup and then when it's dry you can do a second layer without being afraid of smudging or you know removing the makeup you've already put on your face yes. you can work in layers and get a nice coverage excuse me I'll ju I just have to break up a cat fight okay, okay. that's fine <laughs> good luck <laughs> That's probably a real cat fight too, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, the fixing spray part is really important if you're going to do like your hands. Uh, I have done the fixing spray on my hands today and it is not at all as smudgy as it was when I tried to do this makeup before without the fixing spray. So I do recommend, recommend to have that if you're doing body paints. Yes. And also if you're hoping, if you're going to use body paint um, for a long period of time, for like several hours of, or for a full day, you're going to need that fixing spray because if not, it, you're just going to be full of spots and, and you know, nicks in the paint after a little while. So it's necessary. And if you are planning to, you know, use the restroom and washing your hands afterwards, you need to have a fixing spray or it will turn out like this hand right here. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, I'm just 
browsing uh, Facebook right now for body paint uh, cosplayers and there's one here uh, calling herself Alloy Cosplay. She actually uh, has written a, a post on body paints and uh, products she's using uh, and quite detailed actually for thing products you can use and should use like airbrush paint and something she calls cake makeup. That's maybe the oily. Uh, no, uh, no, cake makeup oily. is a cake makeup huh? is like these. Yeah, then not not oily stuff. Yeah. Uh, applying with water and sponge, and then cream makeup for the ones with the dry skin. And then she was she's talking about the final seal spray, and uh, she also mentions baby or talc powder. Yeah, yeah, because you can use baby powder or talcum powder too uh, as a setting powder as well. Uh, I think people use that maybe for the grease. Um, uh, what I have, what I can see on my own hand right now, because I just done not done any powder on top of it, is that my hand is now very shiny. So I would probably do a layer of powder. Um, after I've done the fixing spray, just so it just doesn't turn out as shiny as I am now. Yeah, a little matted. Yes. So, uh, and also a very good way of uh, applying powder uh, for you know a, a better finish and for setting it is what's known as a kabuki brush, like a big fluffy makeup brush that you just and you just dust it lightly over your makeup and it'll help it set and not smudge off as much. But. Uh, now we haven't talked about the different ways of applying, like your yes. uh, body paint makeup thing, because there are three different ways that is most common to use, yes. and uh, they are. One of them is extremely pricey, <laughs> and that involves you uh, buying a hey. airbrush, uh, which is kind of pricey, I guess, for one everyday cosplayer wouldn't necessarily need it, but... No. No, I mean, uh, the airbrush will, of course, give you a very nice, clean uh, finish, very even, uh, but it is expensive, and, of course, you're going to need someone to help you put on a lot of the makeup because you can't really do the, your own backside yourself. No, but, but that's, that's hard. That's even hard with the sponge and the pencil, too, so... Yeah, which is the other two methods. You can uh, brush the makeup on with a square brush, um, just, you know, a normal flat squared brush. You can even use a regular paint brush if you don't have a makeup brush. And you just brush it on your skin. And uh, it'll be uh, very even, but you're going to need several coats to cover it up properly. Um, and also the third one is the sponge, where you just dab it on with a round sponge. Uh, this is my sponge. It's an egg sponge, and it's really great because it doesn't have any edges. Mm, yes, egg sponges are very good for that. Um, uh, and also wedges are a really bad idea because they leave like uh, edged marks on your skin and, and the, the color is very blotchy. If you use a wedge, like it, it looks like a, a, a cake slice, they're, they're not really good. So use rounded rounded sponges with a very who are very fine that don't have very big pores. That's also very, very important. And also, if you're using a sponge, you should put some water on the sponge first because if you don't do it, the sponge will absorb a lot of the makeup. But if it's a little bit wet, then it won't absorb as much and you won't waste makeup. Yeah, basically. Uh, so what I did today is that I've used a sponge. So I have two layers of white on my skin. I also have some black and gray just to mark my cheekbones and also around my nose uh, and on my eyelids uh, and then I've dusted a little bit of pink in my cheeks you can't see it that well now because this camera is so sucky um, but it makes it look really nice and even but the backside with sponges is that the makeup does become very thick so it cracks easily um, so that's the thing to be careful with when you're using a sponge is to make sure that you don't put it on too thick. Because it's it's good for photo shoots. The makeup, makeup will look awesome on camera. But if you're going to wear it an entire day, every time you frown or make a face, the, the makeup is going to stretch and crack a little bit. Yeah. 
Actually, uh, the same cosplayer here. Uh, she's talking ab about uh, various um, various uh, applying uh, techniques for the different uh, uh, products, and uh, for her, it lasts almost eight hours. So it's quite worth uh, checking it out. Uh, posted. Yeah, I'll in. I'll leave a link to it in the show notes when we finish the show, so people can uh, yeah. head on over there and read it. Yeah, and, and it's not only like the applying makeup and maybe even some cheats, but it's also washing it off again. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's really helpful, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, that's one of the things. If you have grease paint, for example, you're going to need something, some strong soap to get it off or, uh, well, something that breaks down grease at least. Uh, yeah. Whereas with the dish aqua colors, washer. yes, dishwasher <laughs> soap, basically. So you're going to dry out pretty fast. But if you wear, use the aqua colors, they wash off in the shower with regular soap and water. So they're yeah. really easy to, to get off your face and your body. Yeah. And also... Uh, I really recommend you to have different brushes and uh, sponges and stuff for yes. for your for your body paint makeup. Yeah, it's recommended that you have a separate set that you clean very often uh, because uh, bacteria will uh, start to grow on your brushes if you leave them uncleaned for longer amounts of time. So and also, since the body paint makeup are often a little bit thicker, uh, you shouldn't need to use like your most expensive brushes on that because it will wear them out. Yeah, um, because the best way to clean them is to use, you know, dishwasher soap. And uh, if you use like the runs with real hair, you'll just end up ruining them. So use synthetic brushes. That is also a very good tip that we got from the Visage makeup store lady. Yeah. Uh, Aloy is recommending using a soap with a bit of citrus in it because the acid helps break down the paint and like just put it on yourself and then exfoliate. Yeah, that's probably a very good idea. You should um, also before before doing a full body paint, you should also exfoliate your your body first just to get rid of like uh, excessive skin yes. and stuff like that. So it that's will get a very good idea. I have one other thing though. If you're yeah. doing a full body paint and you're doing it on your bathroom, uh, just carry all the stuff that you don't want to uh, spill on outside before you start and put some old towels on like the toilets and on the floor around you so you won't make a mess after yourself. And especially if you are a cosplayer and in a hotel, um, I guess the maids would rather wash towels than the whole bathroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Order extra towels if you need them. That's it. There, there's no shame in that because body paint will get everywhere. Even if you're just doing your face, you'll have it all over your hands and on your sink most likely. Especially if you're not um, very, you know, very skilled at it, or if it's the first time you're doing it, you're going to make a mess regardless. I always do. And uh, I also have a. Um, special effects makeup artist who has who has her own YouTube channel who's doing a lot of like body paint types of things mixed with latex masks that she has made herself uh, and I think we should put a link up for her page uh, when this show is over because she what she does is amazing she uses an airbrush because it's so much faster than you know using a sponge <laughs> yeah it's a lot faster a lot faster yeah and she calls herself uh, Elin SFX makeup or Eli. Elin's or... FX makeup, maybe? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so what does she do? She does special effects makeup. Okay. With latex and airbrush. Yeah. So, what kind of special effects has she done? She's done a lot of stuff. Like, she's done a mermaid inspired SFX makeup and a Jurassic World kind of thing with the dinosaur mask and stuff like that. So, you should absolutely check her out and learn stuff. Yes. Uh, and also, uh, there are a lot of Norwegian cosplayers that do a lot of body paint and face paint uh, who are worth following on Facebook. Or, you know, they're also really, really friendly. So, if you find yourself in a pinch, and you, you really need some good advice, you can probably send them a message because they're really, really nice and, and helpful and friendly. 
and those are Crick's Design and Karin Olava Effects and also Beth Canard Cosplay does a lot of uh, face paint. She actually has a, a monthly face paint challenge that she does. So we can see if we can find her. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and I'll just screen share that because it's pretty awesome how much she's been able to do. So this is Beth Canard Cosplay's page. And as you can see, the, she does quite elaborate uh, pieces of facial makeup. The Joker and White Rabbit. Burned. <laughs> yeah, burned blood thingy. Uh, a doll. It looks kind of Coraline inspired. Yeah, with gelatin button eyes. Uh, Emma Frost, I think, from yeah. the X-Men. And a sugar skull and cat or wolf, wolf and the Grinch <laughs> and Mystique. So she's definitely worth a follow because she does a lot of cool thing with uh, with body paint. So that's very good inspiration. It is for all of us who are aspiring. Um, <laughs> so I've just I've just done uh, like a half body paint uh, once where I covered most of my chest and my arms and my face and I'm going to do it again for Toricon and I'm hoping that it will turn out better this time because last time took ages and ages because the makeup was so bad because it was so cheap so if you're gonna do body paint please please invest in a proper brand because it's just not gonna look right if you don't no this it's gonna look, look like for like 10 seconds and then it will melt off or something yeah, and like just under the, you know, in your armpits, if you don't have the proper makeup, it's just going to, you know, turn to goop and just smudge off all over your clothing. <laughs> just saying, I tried it, it wasn't worth it. Yes. So, yeah. So, the, the more expensive makeup will basically make your life happier than the cheap. Yeah, and it, when we say more expensive, we don't mean super expensive. It doesn't have to be. Like one of these cakes, which will last you pretty long because it's very, you know, um, economic in its use, it costs like 195 Norwegian krona, and it's like 55 um, milliliters worth, like 1.9 ounces, and... Yeah, it's it's really economic. It'll last you a long time. It'll cover your entire body several times as well. Yes, um, you mix that with water. Yeah, you mix it with water and you put it on a sponge, and then you pat it on your skin. And um, yeah, and this one is really opaque as well, so uh, you don't need to use more than like two or three layers of makeup tops, and you'll be perfectly perfectly set. Very nice. Mm. Uh, also, the fixing spray uh, doesn't have to be very expensive, but I bought the the more expensive version, which cost me 300 Norwegian krona. But you can find it for less in different kinds of bottles. But I bought this because it has, you know, it's a gas spray. It's an aerosol spray. So yeah, it's an it, aerosol spray. So it does. Uh, it dries when you spray. It doesn't need to like. Yeah, and also. You can just hold in the the nozzle, and it'll just keep spraying, so you don't have to do several pumps, which is better. But uh, Anyasia has a different one. Why don't yeah. you share with that? Uh, I have one of these pumps, as you were talking about. Um, uh, it works very well. Uh, I used it when I was in London uh, for my makeup as Kira, and uh, it was very hot in London, so I was going around sweating all day. And thanks to this one, the makeup uh, hold. So, yeah. and it's not, I mean, it's not a big bottle, but you don't need many sprays in your face for it to stay. Yeah. And obviously I think that, yeah, no, finish. that is better for your face than your whole body. I think the, yeah. the big can from Triolan is more like for the whole body and yeah. to make it easier and faster. Although this one says it, do not spray in the eye area. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used it, uh, the first time I used it, I actually like closed my eyes, sprayed, and I opened my eyes too early and it started to really burn. So okay. if you use it in your face, close your eyes, wait for it to dry a little before you open your eyes. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, also, a good tip: uh, if you, you know, uh, if you're a little bit impatient and you want your makeup to dry a little faster, you can either use, you know, one of those those fold-out fans and just fan your face, or you can take a, a blow dryer and just set it to cold and then uh, blow dry your face because that, that'll make the, the makeup and the setting spray dry faster. Uh, you can also go outside and stand in the wind, or you yeah. can move really fast. <laughs> no, then it will start to sweat. Then you'll sweat. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, that'll make it, that'll, that'll streamline the process, so it won't take that long to put the makeup on if every layer dries as fast as possible. So at least that's what I did today when I was doing my makeup because I was kind of in a rush and um, I didn't want to spend too much time on it so I just blew dry my face. Yes. Yeah. 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 It worked. It did. <laughs> uh, I have a different kind of uh, makeup than you do because you have the cape one. I have like yeah. a uh, TV stick it's called. It's from the same brand. And it's what like drag queens use and what they use on theater and on TV and stuff just to make your face really, really covered. So you get these in like all uh, skin tone colors. Yeah, and I think those are 159 per stick. Uh, and they're kind of, they're a little bit more oily than the, than the Creolon cakes. And uh, obviously you don't want to cover your entire body with a stick. No. No, this is better for face. Um, Contouring, for example, uh, like you know, for painting on cheekbones or uh, changing your facial structure in any other way, these sticks are amazing because you can get them in pretty much any skin tone imaginable. Uh, so. I like it re very well because I'm planning to use that when I'm going to do uh, Samara because uh, I'm not going to make myself all white. I'm just like making myself a shade paler and a little bit more gray, and so I mix it with a little bit. Of black and blue, just to yes. get it the right. Yeah, but because that's one of the differences too. Your character is has been, you know, human, and she's just, you know, uh, a little rotten or decomposed or something like that. Whereas my character is is a, a, a artificial character. She's like a concept more than anything. And so in every comic, she is all white except when she's among the living, and she is, you know, skin colored. Yes. So. So, so that's also something to take into consideration. Uh, how opaque do you need your makeup to be? Because if you only need to cover yourself lightly like you do, then the sticks will work just fine. Uh, and if you need something more heavy duty than the, the, the aqua color cakes, or there are all, also liquids in like spray bottles you can just dab on your body. That, those work fine as well. Or the airbrush. Or the airbrush. Uh, you can also actually, uh, if you're going to do the airbrush, if you have an airbrush, you can actually put, a, if you put a lot of water in this, you can water it out and use the liquid from the cake in the, in the diffuser in the airbrush pen. So you don't necessarily need to buy the liquid, you can buy this and then just water it out. So, it's possible. Uh, uh, and it's and it's also really important if you're uh, using colored makeup, like different shades, eyeshadows, and stuff like that, that you use makeup with a lot of pigments, or else it will just die out in the rest of the thing. So normal eyeshadows for normal use would usually not work because they are not uh, as pigmented as like the more theatery types. Yes, that's true. Although, uh, my black eyeshadow, which is, um, oh, I think it might be Isadora or something, uh, it's holding up pretty well around my eyes. But you, you need to put a lot of it on, and then you have to use the uh, fixing spray or setting mist or something to keep it on there, because, of course, it's easy to rub off because it's on top of something else. Uh, but I have some brands that I do recommend that have, have like really, really pigmented colors that will stick. And that is, of course, Benai, uh, which they do have at Visage. The same with Kriulam, which is the brand that we've been talking about all night. Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and also there's another uh, cosmetics line called Sugar Pill, 
which uh, basically has almost only eyeshadows and just a little bit more. I that you can find on um, their internet store. They don't have they don't have uh, self sugar pill in Norway. No. No. no, so they're called sugar pill cosmetics, which should yeah. be easy to go for. Yeah, uh, and also if you if you find yourself in need of makeup brushes, um, they are they tend to be kind of expensive often, at least in Norway. So uh, a site that I can recommend that have them for um, really really decent prices is EyesLipsFace.co.uk or Elf Cosmetics for short. Uh, they have a lot of brushes for really, really neat prices, and they don't have a really high shipping rate either. So I can really recommend that because I've used it before, and uh, I haven't found anything to complain about really uh, on their product. So I really recommend that for just easy brushes for, for makeup that you're not afraid to mess up. Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh, it's itchy. That's the thing. When you're wearing body paint, when your skin itches, you kind of just have to dab yourself because you can't go like, ah, all out. <laughs> Which I have a tendency to do with my eye makeup all the time. I'm just like, oh, and then yeah. it's all fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I do. But I, I don't itch, which is really weird for me because I always kind of react to makeup and stuff like that. The last time I tried to use this uh, makeup stick, my face kind of swelled up and I got like these red bumps uh, where the makeup had been. So, But today I'm not reacting at all. So. Yeah. Well, maybe it's because you've bought proper products. Maybe you just... It, it's uh, the same. It's the same product. It's the same product. Okay. Well, maybe you've just gotten used to it then. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I feel very pretty because all my all the lines in my face are just being washed out by all this facial paint. <laughs> so I have a very even face. <laughs> you found the, the spring of youth. Yes, the, the <laughs> fountain of youth. Body paint. No, no. But but seriously, when you come up close, though, you see that it's a very thick layer of of makeup. So it's only good in pictures. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that kind of uh, brings us th brings us through everything we asked her about. Or was there more? Um, if you're doing like latex pieces, I guess, uh, like scars or things like that. Yeah, or small latex. pieces like that are easy to do at home by yourself. But if you're making like a nose or ears or like a whole mask, then I guess you should have professional equipment or help from someone who knows how to do it. Uh, YouTube is a good helper, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's a lot of things you can use at home. Like you can use gelatine and Kleenex or liquid latex and Kleenex to make like... Um, bruises and cuts and stuff like that, or nasty zombie bites, maybe. Yeah, it's because the paper kind of dissolves easily, so it's easy to to you know uh, just layer it into the makeup. Uh, so so a lot of uh, of professional uh, makeup effects uh, or makeup artists use it when they create bumps or bruises or wounds. Mm -hmm. Although I'm not uh, really an expert uh, on that part of the makeup facet, so I'm not going to say too much about that. No, me neither, but I think it's easier to do it than it, uh, what you would think. Yeah, yeah, for sure, I think so too. I don't, I don't think it's that hard. You just need to practice to make it look good. That's what I think. And uh, they also sell, like, um, colors, palettes, color palettes with the right colors that you would need to make, like, a bruise or a cut or a bite or stuff like that. So um, if you go to stores like Visage, they do sell actually things, all the things you would need to do stuff like this. Um, they're not like your regular makeup store at all. And thank God they do have a website. So if you live in a city where you don't have a Visage store, you can just like go on the internet. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, in Creolon and Ben Nye is also available through, you know, American or British websites. If you, 
if you're having trouble ordering from Visage or you don't have a makeup store near you, then then you can find it all online. <laughs> they are very popular brands and they're pretty international, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. Yeah, because internet is not just for porn. No. <laughs> I almost started singing the porn song. <laughs> almost. I, I don't know. I don't know if I should. But I really want to. <laughs> I really want to. <laughs> the internet is for porn. No. no. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, fuck it. So grab your dick and double click for porn, porn, porn. <laughs> I had to, okay? I, I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> yeah, we should totally, like, bleep you out. Yeah, if we could, if we could. This is a live show. We're not bleeping anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> not really, no. I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, Yeah. So let's, uh, I think that's pretty much it. And I don't think we have any questions from the audience um, as of right now. No, but so. uh, there's just one thing. Uh, if you're uh, considering body paint, know how to remove it. Yes, that is important. Very important. <laughs> don't make a mess. And often it can be easier to like, uh, you should think about if you're going to dress yourself before or after you put your makeup on because you can like spend 10 hours maybe covering your body in this awesome makeup and then you put your cosplay on and everything is ruined. So plan, plan, yeah. plan. Yeah. And yeah. Also, if you have a costume you uh, want to use several times, uh, consider using uh, a bodysuit in the right color underneath instead of doing all body makeup. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and also, I mean, the basic thing is, you know, if you're gonna wear a wig, put your hair up and put it in a hairnet before you start putting on your makeup. That's very important. And also, if you don't have a long wig that's gonna cover your ears, you should paint your ears as well. It's, you know, because that's perfectly possible. Like my ears are not painted now because the the wig is so long, so it's not important. But if I were wearing my my auburn pixie wig, then and I was going with this color, I would definitely paint my ears because it's just going to look weird if you don't. Yeah, and also like the back of your neck, even though it's just like this piece showing, it would look weird. <laughs> so, yeah, just take your time and, and, and pay attention to the details, basically. Watch some how to do this videos on YouTube. Yeah. There are plenty of, of videos where people talk about the different kinds of products that are out there, how to apply makeup, and how to keep the makeup on your face, and, and whatever. So you can find everything you need to know on YouTube, basically. Yeah, just uh, give it a try and see what uh, suits you and your skin best. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, don't, uh, don't make uh, the mistake of uh, you applying body makeup the day before the con. <laughs> yeah, for the, no, don't do that for the first time on on the day of the con or the day before the con because you will get a nasty surprise. Yeah. Um, I I recommend doing ma a, a a makeup test maybe two or three times before you go to a con just so you have all the details nailed down and you know how long it'll take you. And if you do it like three times, you'll also have the opportunity to streamline the process. You know, then you'll know. Okay, this takes time, what can I do while I wait for this to dry, or uh, how many layers do I need, and what kind of makeup will sit and look right with, you know, the paint, those kinds of things. So it's very, very important to practice before you actually go out in public with your, with your body paint. Yes, because I today realized that the black eyeshadow that I don't, that I have isn't as black as I want it to be, so I would need to buy another stick that's darker. Hmm. Uh, and also one thing that I learned is uh, my uh, sponge is a little big, so uh, going around the eyes is really hard, So especially if you want to go very close to the eyes. So what I did was, while the, the makeup was still wet, I took a small brush and I just painted on 
around the eyes to get it even and as close to the to the waterline as possible. Then uh, the egg sponge is easier because then yes. you can use like the yeah pointy that, piece. Yeah. <laughs> but if you can't but if you can't find an egg sponge, that is a, a good solution to your po possible problem. Yeah. Yeah, and also don't use. You have to be careful with overusing water because if you have too much water in your body paint makeup, it'll become like really runny and watery, and you won't get good cover. So you have to really like work the water into the paint um, before you start dabbing it on because it's not going to look good if if there's too much water in the paint. <laughs> yeah. But that only goes for the cake version, of course. If you buy a liquid one on like a tube that you can just pump out and, and uh, put on like a regular creamy foundation, then that's not going to be a problem, of course. No, because the, f the, the ones in the, like, the cans that you press on is already mixed. Yes, it's already pre-mixed and liquidy, so you can just put that on with your fingers if you want to, or, or a brush or whatever. <laughs> I hope we're not saying things that makes makeup artists turn in their graves. <laughs> We've probably said something that they're like, no, no, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. But the then thing come on our show and tell us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, this is cosplay body paint. We're not, you know, it's not necessarily done uh, to look a uh, hundred percent professional. It's it's for a costume. It's mostly for fun, um, putting the play in cosplay. So. Uh, it's just the basics, so people can have a general idea of of the process and how much work it is putting on proper body paint. Yeah, I think I use like half an hour on my hands and then maybe ten minutes on my face because I didn't have enough time. So you can see the difference between my two hands because mm. I'm really proud of that. <laughs> it looks it looks very undead and and unpleasant. <laughs> Yeah, that was what I was going for, so... Yeah, if that hand was, like, reaching for me, like, right now, I would so totally scream. Like that? Yeah. But, yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's move on, then, from the main topic, because I think we pretty much exhausted it with our, with our well of knowledge. I um, think so, too. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on to the last segment. Stop <laughs> it! Stop it, Annabella! <laughs> okay, you can creep out our watchers just a little bit more. <laughs> I know one watching who loves you <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, people are going to sleep soon. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really bad. But um, it's just me. <laughs> yeah, it's just you. Uh, yeah. But let's move on to the next segment. Let's talk about what have we watched, read, or gamed this week. Let the geekery commence. Ooh, <laughs> I have uh, played Assassin's Creed, as I usually do, and I love the game. Uh, I spend a lot of time doing like random quests because I, I, I like doing everything. I need to have done everything before I kind of complete the main story. So I'm, I'm deadly afraid that the main story will end and I haven't been able to, you know, do all the other side quests. Mm, yeah, I have that thing too whenever I play Dragon Age or The Witcher. It's like, need to do all the quests. But in The Witcher, you can't really do that because then you've out-leveled all of your main quests and and then it's not, you know, a challenge anymore and that's no fun. But that's <laughs> where I kind of... Now in Assassin's Creed <laughs> because yeah. everything is too easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's really hard uh, to, to you know completionist or story. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I have decided that I'm going to buy some games from a game company called Rather Dashing Games, and I'm really excited about that because they have a lot of fun games. And they are a Norwegian game publisher as well. No, they're not. They're American. Oh, they're not. They're American. Okay, but you have some friends working for them. Well, friends or friends. I uh, there's one of the guys. <laughs> maybe there's one of the main guys from uh, Ghost Hunters uh, in over in the U.S. who are oh, right. the publisher guy for the games. Right. And he's so they're kind American. Of, they're they're American, but they're really into steampunk, which is cool. Yay! Mm. I love steampunk. <laughs> Was that your bottle? 
No, it was uh, her dog. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, my dog found a chew toy making oh, like right. squeaky noises. He loves this. <laughs> it's like his favorite. <laughs> He's going to slay it. Great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I haven't had the chance to game a whole lot. Oh, well, uh, that's lying. I have gamed, just not uh, computer games. Uh, we had a gaming weekend out in Moss. Uh, with some friends recently. So we played Pathfinder, uh, the tabletop RPG, and I'm a bard, and it was fun. There was some dice shaming involved, and that's always interesting. <laughs> they were, the, the, the dice were misbehaving, so they got a turn in the freezer. <laughs> Punishment. I saw, some, I saw some pictures of that. Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was stuck in between bacon and some frozen uh, frozen veggies or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, good times were had. Good times were had. Yeah. And I also went swimming um, because the weather was so nice and that was really awesome. Yeah. And nice. I started rereading the Harry Potter series. So I'm on the Chamber of Secrets right now. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, a lot more kid-friendly than I remember it. Uh, at least the first books are. So I'm kind of looking forward to getting on to, you know, the, the fourth and fifth and sixth book because they're a little bit more grown up. Just like the movies. Just like yeah. the movies. Which was yeah. awesome because I was 11 when I started reading the first book. And, yeah, I know, uh, right? It was and perfect. Then, and every year th there was a new book. I was at the same age as the book and it was awesome. So I had, I really, really dreamed about Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about this today. That we, when we were starting, you know, school, we were we were dreaming like, oh, I wish I get a letter from Hogwarts in my mailbox. Yeah. <laughs> one one kind of secret though is that when I was, you know, sixteen or seventeen, when you start like the college thing in Norway, I was like, wow, this school is just like Hogwarts, and I get a book list now. I have to buy books just like in the movies <laughs> and in the book. Yeah. So I kind of pretended that I was at Hogwarts. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're so adorable. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I kind of felt that way too. <laughs> what about you, Anelcia? Have you done anything this year? Harry Potter. When I was, uh, I mean, I didn't read Harry Potter or see any of the movies when I was like 16. I was much older, so I couldn't have the same feeling. But, uh, well. What have I seen? I have seen some episodes of MacGyver. Um, unfortunately, uh, the new work is leaving me quite drained uh, when I get home. So <laughs> all I can do is like sit down on the couch after having dinner and then slowly fade away. And then I yeah. fall asleep. <laughs> and then when I wake up, it's evening and it's like oh my god one or two hours till I have to go to sleep <laughs> <laughs> uh, preaching to the choir mm, yes. so I don't have much time to do any cosplay or nerdy stuff I'm afraid yeah. only in the weekends then I can do a little bit more <laughs> yeah. uh, I in my periods where I'm really obsessive um, I, I'll do cosplay for like two or three hours after I come home from work because if I don't I'll be thinking about it and then I can't sleep so even if I'm exhausted, I'll just work on it just because I can't do anything else. <laughs> I have to get it out of my system. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of the way I feel about my new pro markers. They're over there on my desk, and I really want to draw something now because they're brand new. And Yeah, I knew. <laughs> I want to use them. So, yeah, I, I, have a, uh, I have obsessive tendencies. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't uh, we all? Our, uh, us uh, creative people. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I guess that pretty much wraps up this episode. Um, yeah. Uh, next next week and next Sunday, we will not be back. We will be back on Monday uh, because I will be going to Toricon and I won't be home until like. 8 o'clock in the evening or something. 
So we'll have to do it uh, yeah, on, on next Monday. And then that will be a Toricon special where I will talk a little bit about how I, how, how I experience Toricon and the panels and the people and the competitions and everything. Pictures! Pictures! Or it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that'll be our next episode next Monday. Remember that. And we'll also keep you informed on our Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com slash causecast. You can follow us there, and we put all our updates and infos and everything on that page. Yes. You can also find me on Instagram under the name Anita Pixie Dust in one word. And you can also find my cosplay page on Facebook, which is Pixie Dust Cosplay. Pixie Dust written in one word. And Annabella, where can people find you? You can find me on Facebook, uh, which uh, is uh, AnnabellaFacebook.com or something. <laughs> Just search for Annabella Cosplay. Yeah, <laughs> and you'll find her. Me. And I also have an Instagram account, but that is not mainly cosplay. That's just like my uh, everyday life kind of Instagram. So it's called N G H S U N N I B. So N G H Suniva. Yes. Yes. And you, Anyasia? Well, it's the same. Uh, I have a Facebook page. Just uh, search for Anyasia. E N Y A S S. I A? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Yossia cosplay. Yeah. Yes. That's where you'll find me. Yes. So that's where you'll find us. And uh, we can announce already now that during the season we will be uh, hosting some shows with some international cosplayers, which will be really exciting. We're not going to re reveal who it is just yet, but it's going to be awesome. It is. Yes. Uh, and also, we will try to have more male cosplayers on this season uh, to even it out, because mostly we've had only female cosplayers on so far. Yes, we so, have. So. Yeah, so it's going to be exciting! Yay. Yay. Yes. So I guess... I, I guess... <laughs> I guess that's that's all for now, folks. Uh, and we'll see you next week. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.